The mission of the National Foundation for Celiac Awareness is a, a mission of driving diagnosis. It's a mission of helping folks reclaim their lives and restore their health just through getting diagnosed and a change in diet. We envision a world where, as Bruno was telling you, there's potentially three million people in the United States, up to three million people that are undiagnosed with celiac disease. We want them simply stated to get diagnosed. And we want to have standardized tests and make sure that the people that are out there suffering, the many, many millions of people out there suffering needlessly, can go on a gluten-free diet and be healthy. Now, why did I start this foundation? I started this foundation because it was, a, it was a personal journey. I actually came from a business development background, and I had no experience in nonprofit. And unfortunately, my situation is not unlike so many thousands of people that write to me every single day and email me. Um, it took them, it was written up in Good Housekeeping, and also they covered it in Newsweek. I took um, 23 doctors, that's 23 doctors, to diagnose my celiac disease. Um, I'm not a heavy person right now. I was 25 pounds lighter. And if I start from my head to my toes with all my symptoms, my hair was falling out, my teeth were breaking. Um, I was tired all the time. And as my daughter said today, I'm like the Energizer Bunny. Um, I just wasn't myself. I had chronic diarrhea. I had a full-term stillborn child. I had three miscarriages. And my youngest daughter, Bibi, who's sitting right here in the front row, was two and a half pounds when she was born. She fit into the palm of my hand. And it's something called intrauterine growth retardation, which means my placenta was shutting off. And it was shutting off because of lack of nourishment. And now they know undiagnosed celiac disease leads to intrauterine growth retardation and fertility and reproductive health problems. I went to doctor after doctor after doctor. They told me it was in my head. They told me that I needed psychiatric help. They told me I had anorexia. Nobody knew to, to test me. Nobody knew even knew the word. I never even heard the word celiac until a friend of mine who happens to be, guess what, a veterinarian. She was a veterinarian and said, you know what? Sometimes dogs have problems with their grain. Dogs have problems with their grain. Maybe you should go back and get them to test you for your grain. Something, maybe you're allergic to something. And finally, the 23rd doctor, doctor number 23, who is a gastroenterologist, tested me. And he's, when he tested me, it was an odd diagnosis. He said, I have good news for you. We finally figured out what's wrong with you. You have this disease called celiac. The bad news is you can't eat anything. You know, I don't even know how to tell you to, to live your life because you're not going to be able to go to a restaurant. And you know what? I can't guide you. You have to join a support group. Well, I, I got that news, and I thought, wow, oh, my gosh, I'm not dying of cancer. And unfortunately, my mother died of pancreatic cancer when she was 51 years old. Um, they know that undiagnosed celiac disease leads to certain kinds of cancer, like lymphoma and like pancre pancreatic cancer. Um, unfortunately, she had a lot of the same symptoms, and she died, according, in my estimation, needlessly. So when I found out that I just had to change my diet, I was ecstatic. I was, I was thrilled. And I'm not alone. Um, I have women who, um, for years and years and years, have not been able to get pregnant. They've um, spent, one woman told me, she wrote a personal story, she spent $70,000 in fertility testing, and she could not get pregnant. Um, she, her sister was diagnosed with celiac disease. The doctor refused to test her anyway. She went on a gluten-free diet, and six months later she got pregnant, and she's now 23 weeks pregnant, and she said, you know what, it's, a, it's been a miracle. And the last story I have for you uh, is a celiac child. And this is a story of, an, of failure to thrive. And this little girl's name is Sophie. And Sophie was two years old, and she had undiagnosed celiac disease. Unfortunately, she was so malnourished that all her organs started to shut down, and she could no longer walk. She was in the hospital. They thought she might have bone cancer. And um, at the time, one of my board members had volunteered to be interviewed on uh, 
ABC, she saw the ABC newscast and she said to the doctor, do you think it could be celiac? The doctor ended up testing Sophie for celiac disease and voila, she's now healthy, she's five years old, she's running around and it's amazing, it's really amazing that a change in diet can, and a diagnosis can so dramatically change a family's life. Well, I think you all know the science behind celiac disease, but <clears throat> I thought we would just go over a quick couple facts. And, and Bruno had mentioned that 3 million people have the disease. Um, that's one in 133 people. Um, but again, there's only about 100,000 people in the country that know they have it. Um, and people are suffering needlessly today. So we need to continue to drive diagnosis. And these are the chronic health conditions that are either um, associated with celiac disease or the consequences of celiac disease. Again, you have, you have a health condition, you have di an association with diabetes, you have an association with thyroid disease, you have different kinds of cancers, the intestinal cancers, the lymphoma, the <clears throat> esophageal cancer. Um, any pancreatic cancer and colon cancer. So it's just not, oh, you know, these people aren't, they're not feeling well, they're not doing well. No, it's, it causes serious health consequences. We've launched a national awareness campaign, and really the national awareness campaign is a push pull campaign and is a campaign to go direct to the consumer and it's a campaign to work with the physicians to educate them, to get them to recognize celiac disease as a common disease and diagnose patients. <clears throat> and what is it that we want people to do? What is it we want doctors to do? You know, we have to have some kind of call to action. And the call to action is to go to the website to learn about celiac disease. If you're a patient, you're going to print out the symptom checklist. You all have a symptom checklist. You should have gotten one when you came in. And you're going to ask your doctor to test you. And if you're a physician, you're going to take an interest in celiac disease. And you're going to start to realize that it's not a rare disease of childhood. It is a common disease affecting 1% of the population. Now, we have uh, some very creative ways of going about getting our message across. We've been, <clears throat> we have a spokesperson, her name is Heidi Collins, and she's on CNN every day, and I thought I'd like to show you a clip of what she's done for the foundation and her personal story. I've heard of it, but neither have 97 percent of the people who have it. More than three million <coughs> Americans will spend an average of nine years <coughs> before they get an accurate diagnosis. I did, and lost a child while waiting. Symptoms like stomach problems, diarrhea, headaches, pregnancy complications, osteoporosis, a gluten-free diet, eliminating wheat, barley, and rye is the only treatment. Visit celiaccentral.org. A simple blood test could change your life. Hearing Heidi's story, she gives you a little glimpse of what went on in her life, but Heidi, she, you know, she has to deliver the news and she doesn't have time, and she'll tell you this, she would say, oh my gosh, they're, you know, they're filming me and I had to run, get up to run to the bathroom, you know, and you're being filmed, you're on CNN, you're on camera, and you have to run to the bathroom constantly. So you tr start to change your whole life, you start to not eat properly. She has celiac disease and her son has celiac disease and she lost a child. And they um, can restore their health and reclaim their life. You know, I don't know, without that, you know, getting tested and diagnosed, um, you know, where most of the people that will be at the spree tomorrow night and, and the, the letters that I get, their lives would still be devastated. So thank you for your help and thank you for your support.